Today, it's movie recap time for Into the Forest, a drama thriller released in 2015. The film is set somewhere in the United States in the future and revolves around a pair of sisters named Nell and Eva. They live with their father in a secluded house surrounded by woods. Eva nurtures dreams of becoming a dancer, while Nell is a scholarly individual, eagerly trying to get accepted into an Ivy League institution. Since they live so far out of town, the cabin features a diverse collection of books of all kinds, which comes in handy when challenging times surface. On a particular day, Robert, the girl's father, reads an article while the TV is on. All of a sudden, breaking news announces that there is a huge power outage all over the west coast of the country. Minutes later, as Nell studies for her test, the whole house loses power. Their cell phone signals are also lost. Forced to adapt her study methods, Nell walks to the car to get a flashlight. However, the girl is careless and ends up forgetting to properly close the trunk. This makes the car's light stay on throughout the entire night, eventually depleting the battery. The next morning, they all get ready to go to town to buy supplies and fill up the car's tank. However, they soon find out that the car won't start. Nell apologizes, and Robert goes to look for a spare battery. In the meantime, Nell tries to listen to the news on her solar-powered radio. They hear that the nearby power plant has been shut down for unknown reasons. As they attempt to start their car, the radio also mentions speculations about a group of terrorists trying to seize control of power plants across the country. It is mentioned that the government urges everyone to remain at home and preserve their resources. In the following days, all radio broadcasts come to an end. Ten days after the incident, the power remains unavailable. On the other hand, after struggling with the battery for over a week, Robert has a brilliant idea and asks for Nell's shoelaces. Employing a chainsaw, he skillfully manages to start the car. The trio finally gets to drive to town to get some much-needed supplies. Along the way, the family notices the silence and emptiness of the houses they pass. The gas station they come across shows a sign saying they've run out of fuel. As they reach the grocery store, they find most of the shelves empty. An employee named Stan, carrying a rifle, scares the girl's father. Stan explains that many people have been trying to loot the store during the crisis. Unfazed, Robert explores the aisles with his daughters. They buy some food and acquire five gallons of gas from the employee. While loading their purchases into the car, Stan offers them a box of free candles. He inquires if they intend to leave town with that gas, and Robert replies that they're not going anywhere. Shortly after, the family tries to regain some normalcy in their lives. While Eva goes to her dance practice, Nell goes to a party with her boyfriend, Eli. The girl gets hammered and seems to have a great time. At night, their dad comes to pick them up, and they head back home. As they drive through the woods, they see a car stopped on the side of the road with a man inside. Since they appear to be in some kind of trouble, Robert makes the rookie mistake of getting out of the car to help. Two unfriendly men with guns stare at him, so he promptly gets back in the car. By the time they get home, the car is nearly out of gas. The next day, they realize they'll have to use the supplies they've gotten to survive for the next few weeks. There's no electricity, and they can't hear any news on the radio. Having had a taste of what it looks like out there, Robert decides they won't go to town for a while, believing they can handle things on their own. The family has good shelter, water, and some chickens. There are also wild animals and plants in the woods that can help them survive. Hearing her father's announcement, Nell gets angry and storms off. The girl clearly wants to see her boyfriend. Later that day, Robert goes into the woods to cut down a tree for firewood. Unfortunately, a loose screw makes him lose control, so he ends up cutting himself badly. His cries of agony catch the attention of Eva and Nell, who quickly run to his rescue. They use a belt to create a makeshift tourniquet on his thigh to halt the bleeding. However, it becomes evident that the man is losing way too much blood. As he instructs his girls to look after each other, Eva pleads with him to hold tight. Robert is beyond help, so his daughters simply lie next to him, mourning their traumatic loss. Early in the morning, they dig a grave and bury their father. Since they had already lost their mother during their childhood, Robert was all the family they had. They take comfort in being together and head back home to clean up. In the coming days, they grieve, giving themselves time to heal emotionally. Fast forward two months, and the sisters have adapted to their new life. While memories of their father remain, they've learned to accept their situation. They've also become skilled at using their resources wisely. That morning, they enjoy some eggs from the chickens they raise. Frustrated by the absence of technology and electricity, Eva takes the five gallons of gas they have and proposes to Nell that they switch on the generator briefly. 
Eva wants power for a short time so she can dance to actual music instead of a metronome. Nell is reasonable and denies her request. She explains that going to town and back would use up at least four gallons, so they should save it for emergencies. Eventually, Eva gives in, and the two sisters remain silent for the rest of the day. The next morning, Nell wakes up and realizes their chickens are gone. Some animal came and ate them both. Since they have no eggs, Nell makes breakfast using the other resources they have left. It seems that Eva is still upset with her, so they don't talk much that day either. As the evening sets in, Nell wakes up and notices that Eva isn't beside her. Concerned, she ventures into the woods to locate her sister. A chilling sound of a squealing hog fills the air as the girl runs through the woods. Thankfully, it's merely a bad dream. Eva embraces her sister and offers comfort. The following day, Nell stumbles upon an egg with some sweets inside. She finds some chocolate and eats it right away, deeply enjoying the moment. Eva unexpectedly walks in and becomes enraged that Nell did not share. However, their interaction is abruptly interrupted by a knock at the door. Nell, armed with their father's rifle, cautiously investigates. To their surprise, it's Eli, Nell's long unseen boyfriend. Eli claims that he hadn't seen her in too long, so he decided to walk around the neighborhood and find out where she lives. Nell invites him in, and the two get to enjoy the next few days in each other's company. One morning, Nell takes Eli to a big tree trunk, inside which there's plenty of space. The family even improvised a roof for it. The two take the opportunity and end up getting physical with each other. When the two sisters are alone, Eva shares that Eli is making their food run out faster, so she asks Nell when he will leave. Eva also pleads with her to not get pregnant. The next day, Eli explains why he came to see Nell. He wanted to make sure that she was the one he loved. Now that he's certain, he suggests they go to Boston together. He's heard that there's a working society there with electricity and job opportunities. Nell is excited about the idea and shares it with her sister. Eva hears it out and immediately decides to stay where they are. She doesn't believe that Boston is as good as people say and thinks it's just rumors. She advises them not to take the risky eight-month journey to Boston on foot. The next day, as the sisters say goodbye, tears roll down Nell's cheeks. Through her tears, she shares that they're all the family they have. Eva replies, saying their decisions were personal and there's no need for blame. As their paths separate, Eva finds comfort in dancing, trying to find something to do now that she's alone. However, her frustration is evident as she breaks the metronome she uses for dancing. In the meantime, Nell and Eli choose a place to rest for the night. They set up an improvised camp without tents and go to sleep. As soon as Nell wakes up, she lets Eli know that she needs to head back. Eli understands her feelings, but since he is determined to get to Boston, it's time for them to part ways. Nell rushes home with excitement and warmly hugs her sister. They're both thrilled and relieved to see each other again. Half a year into the power outage, the sisters find a guidebook about native plants. Eager to expand their menu, they embark into the woods to collect edible seeds and plants. Berries and vegetables are gathered, carefully processed, and stored to build up their food reserves. At this point, even their supply of toilet paper has ended, leading them to resort to leaves for hygiene. In the evening, Nell feels particularly happy and suggests they open a bottle of liquor. They get drunk and eventually decide to use some of the gas to power the generator. With the house lit up, they make some popcorn in the microwave oven and watch old family videos of their family. At night, Eva starts dancing to music until the generator runs out of power again. The next day, Nell goes to gather berries while Eva stays home to chop some firewood. Suddenly, a man approaches Eva from behind. It turns out to be Stan, the man who sold them supplies months earlier. He claims to be just passing by, but Eva finds his behavior suspicious. The girl tells him her father is nearby, in the woods. However, when Eva lowers her guard for a brief moment, Stan suddenly attacks her. The man begins forcing himself on her while Eva screams for help. Unfortunately, her sister isn't around, so Stan succeeds in his crime. After he's done, Stan steals some of their gas and takes off with their car. When Nell finally gets back, the damage is already done. She sees her sister lying on the floor in bad shape, so Nell does her best to help her out. Eva takes their last aspirin and takes a bath to clean herself. In the meantime, Nell decides to increase the house's security by boarding up the walls. Upon realizing that Eva is still deeply affected by what happened, Nell tries to make her feel better. She uses more of their stored gas to start the generator and play music for her. Unfortunately, it doesn't cheer Eva up. Moving ahead two months, 
It becomes clear that the sisters haven't left the house since Eva's upsetting incident. They've almost run out of food by now. As Nell looks through the shelves and cabinets, she accidentally discovers a note from their father. Excited, she encourages Eva to go outside with her so they may open it. However, their excitement fades when they find only seeds in the note. Nell decides to plant the seeds anyway. While doing it, Nell tries to lift a large rock and accidentally strains a muscle in her back, causing her to cry out in pain. Eva is forced to overcome her fear of going outside to help her sister. Upon returning home, Eva becomes emotional and confesses that even being close to where it all happened triggers traumatic memories. Nell offers comfort, and they eventually drift off to sleep next to each other. The next morning, Eva throws up in the bathroom. After some research, they realize Eva's pregnant. Nell suggests abortion, but Eva is determined to keep the baby. Fast forward seven months, and Nell has delved into pregnancy literature. She learns that Eva's well-being depends on vitamin B12, which can be found in dairy and meat. So, Nell ventures into hunting to help her sister and the baby. She positions herself on a tree branch, aiming and shooting at a passing hog. Surprisingly, the rifle's strong recoil causes her to fall. Fortunately, Nell doesn't get hurt and proceeds to finish the pig. That night, the sisters enjoy a meal of pork and berries. As they eat, Eva detects the scent of smoke coming from outside. Thinking there might be someone camping in the vicinity, the sisters seal the house entrances. Shortly after, heavy rain pours down, followed by an intense storm that rages through the night. Morning comes, and a loud thud wakes them up. Nell quickly grabs the rifle, only to realize that the noise actually came from the ceiling when it collapsed. Soon after, Eva begins to experience contractions, a sign that her baby is on the way. According to a book Nell is reading, contractions can last for hours. To make sure it all runs smoothly, Nell and Eva go to the treehouse in the woods, where Nell went with Eli. There, Nell helps Eva give birth, and luckily, the baby boy is born healthy. The sisters wait for the storm to pass until the next morning, celebrating the new baby. When they go back to the house, it's in even worse condition than before, and they find black mold everywhere. Since it would be unsafe for the baby to stay there, Eva comes up with a bold idea, burn down the house using the remaining gas. She thinks this will make them seem gone, so Stan and other criminals won't bother them anymore. Nell is resistant to the idea at first, but she eventually agrees to it. Before setting it on fire, she takes her time to pack everything that she deems valuable, especially family pictures. When night comes, the sisters get ready to leave. They set the house on fire and watch the flames consume it. From now on, they will live like humans did before electricity was invented. In the last scene, they go deep into the woods and set up camp for the night. Thanks for watching. If you like our content, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe.